on December the 21st, 1970. The first full-scale development Grumman F-14A GR Tomcat took off for its maiden flight from Grumman's flight test center at Calverton. That day, the Grumman chief test pilots, Robert Smith and William Miller, decided to take off in spite of the deteriorating weather. However, these factors have forced the test pilots to cut the flight consisting in a couple of visual patterns with the wings fixed in the forward position. The flight took off for the second time on the December 30 and that day Miller sat in the front cockpit since in the first flight Smith had been in the front. Accompanied by chase planes, it turned towards the southeast to reach its assigned flight test area. Stability and control checks went smoothly, the landing gear was retracted, and Miller started to build up the speed from just over 130 knots to 180 knots. At around 10.43 am, one of the chase planes noted what appeared to be a trail of smoke leaving the Tomcat. As it tried to take a closer look, Miller reported a primary hydraulic system failure. Aborting the sortie, he turned for the base. At 4 miles from Calverton Field, the crew used the emergency nitrogen bottle to blow down the gear. Just after the crew confirmed that it was down and locked, then the inevitable happened. An official investigation was carried out, which showed fatigue failures of the pipes in both hydraulic systems had led to a partial failure of the flying controls. The F-14 Tomcat consisted of two hydraulic systems which were widely separated. These lines were connected using screw threaded valves components which are bulky and prone to leakage. The pipes to be mated were joined using a bimetal sleeve which had been chilled in liquid helium before installation. As these sleeves returned to normal temperature, each shrunk, gripping the lines in a leak-proof junction. What was not appreciated was that the new titanium pipework was sensitive to how it was mounted within the aircraft, both in terms of how it is fixed to the fuselage structure and in terms of the distance between fixings. Eventually. The US Navy ordered the removal of the titanium hydraulic lines, but the shrunk sleeve fitting method was retained. In the aftermath, there were no hydraulic problems again on the F-14 program, and it became a most successful fighter ever built till today.